Hi, I'm Dave and today I'm going to show you all the 3D printers that I've reviewed in this past year. Hopefully at the end of this video you're able to understand enough to choose your first 3D printer. When choosing a printer there's some requirements that you need to consider. Do you want to print big or small? Do you need it to be quiet? Do you need it to look nice? Do you want to modify it? And how much use do you expect to get from it without maintenance? Most of the printers that we'll be looking at today were sent to me by Banggood.com. They're currently having a big sale, so it's a great time to buy. I'll have links and coupon codes to all of the printers that we talk about today down in the description below. If you have a 3D printer and you would like some help with it, come over there to into3dp.com and I'll be happy to help you with any issues that you may have with your printer or if you just want to talk about your printer and uh, share your prints with us. We will start with probably one of the most well-known printers out there, the Creality Ender 3. This one specifically is the Ender 3 XS Pro, which can be purchased from Banggood. Let's look at the pros and the cons of this printer. Pros are, it's got a small form factor, there's heaps of third-party support because there's a massive user base, it's pretty good value for money, and if you get this XS Pro version, it's got silent steppers, 24 volt, and a glass bed. It also comes with the mat bed as well if you like that. The cons are though, it's got a Bowden extruder can be, which can be hard to print flexible materials with and some tuning and modifications are required to get ideal prints. Also the cooling duct is not great. Overall though, the Ender 3 is a solid printer with a good user base and it does this at a cheap price point. To shine though, the Ender 3 does need a few small upgrades. One of these that is more important is the fan duct. Since Creality's fan ducts are not very good, they're just like a little 90 degree scoop. So you do have to go to something like this here, which is the Hero Me fan duct, that can be found on Thingiverse pretty easily. Let's go to our next printer. So staying in the same form factor as the Ender 3, but going up the quality scale, is the Artillery Genius. It is a little more pricey than the Ender, although the specials at the moment really shorten that gap. But it comes with a lot of very useful features that make it need pretty much no modifications to give excellent prints. So let's look at the pros and cons of this guy. Pros are, it's got a small form factor, it's got an AC heated bed so it's super fast, it's 24 volt, it's got silent steppers, it's got a touch screen, it's got this Titan direct drive extruder, it's got a direct glass bed with no metal under it. It looks pretty nice, it's got a nice spool holder with roller bearings, it's got a filament runout sensor, it's really easy to put together. The cons are, this plastic extruder lever here can break over time, the ribbon cables do tend to give trouble, and it does have a higher price point. Although, the Genius is my go-to printer for most jobs, because it's pretty refined and it just works. This does though come at a cost, and you need to weigh, off, weigh up if the extra costs will pay off for you. My favourite thing about it is probably the direct drive extruder, which makes printing TPU really straightforward. One thing to note is that artillery printers do come with a yellow oily residue on the bed and you need to wipe this off with something like alcohol otherwise you won't get good bed adhesion straight up. So when you look at the Ender and the Genius they're a pretty similar design with some feature changes but this printer here is very different. This is the Two Trees Sapphire Pro. It's a Corex Y design printer which basically means instead of the print head moving up and down the bed moves up and down. So this type of printer enables a far higher print speed, as the inertia of the bed moving backwards and forwards normally causes quality issues when trying to print at highest print speeds on a traditional style printer. Let's look at the pros and the cons. So the pros are, can print much faster, it's got an inbuilt enclosure, it's got a touch screen, it's got silent steppers, it looks really nice, and it's got a dual drive extruder. Cons, it's a bit harder to access the bed to clean it up, you can't really see the start of prints easily, doesn't have a glass bed, it's got, and it's got a really long Bowden tube. So the inbuilt enclosure does give this printer a really nice look and it enables the printing of more exotic materials, predominantly ABS. The enclosure is also useful if you don't have a secluded room to keep your printer in and you have airflow where you need to keep it, which can cause warping prints. It is also a lot easier to pass by the wife because when it's folded up, it does actually look pretty nice. So here we have another obscure printer. This is the Ten Log Hands 2, and it's much like the Ender Ingenious, but it has two completely separate print heads. So this makes calibration a little more complex, and not only do you have to 
level the bed, we also need to match the nozzle pipes. This is pretty easy to do, at least with the smart design of this machine. This printer also comes with the most of the standard nice to have features of the Genius, with a bit of a different packaging approach. So let's look at the pros and the cons of this printer. The pros are, it's got a touch screen interface, it's got silent stepper motors, it's 24 volt, it is dual printed, it has a linear rail on the x-axis, and it's got a really, really thick glass bed. It also has two direct drive extruders. The cons are slightly harder to calibrate, the cable routing is a little touchy, um, dual collar printing is a lot harder to get right, especially if you're new to printing, and the right extruder over here does need a mod to print TPU well. So while the dual colour or material features of this printer are great, if they aren't features you wouldn't want to use, I wouldn't recommend this printer, especially as a first printer. But if you are looking for something to do multicolour or multi-material prints, this here is one of the best low-cost options for you. Okay, so we just covered the smaller printer size class, which is around the 220 by 220 mil bed size. This one here is sort of the next size up, which is the 300 by 300 mil bed size. And this size matches the very popular Creality CR10. This printer here is the ANET A8 Plus DIY kit, which is basically the cheapest printer in this size class that one would consider. This isn't to be confused with the original ANET A8, which isn't something they could ever consider for safety reasons. So the ANET A8 Plus is a massive build, and you can see that in my initial review of it on Into3DP, but for the price, it's not that bad of a printer. So let's look at the pros and the cons. Pros are, it's got a direct drive extruder, it's got an all right fan duct, although I don't have it on here at the moment, it's got a pretty big print volume, and it's cheap. The cons are, it's a very in-depth build, about eight hours, it's generally not great quality, needs upgrades for extended use, and it doesn't have quiet steppers. So the NANAT A8 Plus DIY is a good place to start if you're on a low budget and want to learn the intricacies of a 3D printer. This printer comes about as disassembled as possible and required being completely wired up from scratch. I even had to put the heat sinks on the stepper drivers. If you want something that will last a long time without any changes, you may need to reconsider though, as I started having trouble after about 100 hours of print time with the moving assemblies, pulleys that aren't round, linear rollers giving trouble, etc. It all depends on what you want to gain from your first 3D printer though. If you want to learn and build, this is a pretty good place to start, especially if you've got that low budget. What I have here next is basically the polar opposite of the a A8 Plus that we just looked at. This here is the Artillery Sidewinder X1 V4. It's the bigger, older brother of the Artillery Genius that I showed you earlier, and it's in a similar quality category. It shares many of the features of the Genius, like the AC heated bed, silent steppers, and that Titan direct drive extruder. Let's look at the pros and cons of this unit. It's got a small form factor for such a large printer. It's got an AC heated bed, it's 24 volt, silent steppers, touchscreen interface, Titan direct drive extruder. It's got that direct glass bed with no metal layer. It still looks pretty nice. It's got roller bearings on the spool holder, which is out of the shot. It's got a filament runout sensor. It's a very easy to assemble printer. It's got a big build volume, which is 300 by 300 by 400. The cons are, same as the um, Genius, it's got that plastic extruder lever that can break, the ribbon cables can give trouble, and it's got a higher price point. But, if you're looking for a CR10 size printer that will treat you well over its life, this is probably the way to go. This printer is tidy, reliable, and fully featured. I'd recommend you do a few modifications to the ribbon cable setup for strain and relief and retention, and maybe consider purchasing an aluminium extruder lever for when the plastic one gives away. But with these, you'll have a near-perfect printer, and it will treat you well for its life. Here, we have one of my biggest printers. With a mammoth 500 millimeters in each direction build volume, this baby is too big for most people's houses and out of most people's 3D printing budget. It's also lacking on some features that one may get used to on some other printers, like the ones made by Artillery. This is the CR10S. I don't use this very printer very often at all, and I don't think I've used it this year yet, because it's large, and 99% of what I print fits on one of those small printers. Anyway, let's look at the pros and cons. Pros are, it's got a massive build volume, and it's got a glass bed. Cons are, it's got this Bowden extruder. It's big to fit in your house. It's very expensive, and it's not really accurate for small stuff. 
The reason why I don't use this printer for smaller things is that it can't keep up with the print speeds of the other printers. This is because it's constantly lugging around this heavy bed back and forth. And even with the giant stepper motor at the back, it just can't keep up. For this reason, if I have a print that will fit on a smaller printer, I'll print it on that printer. It is for this reason that I wouldn't recommend this printer for a first printer, because you'll find that you won't really need that large build volume. I found that people new to 3D printing would find a larger build volume attractive, but you'll find it rare that you'll print something that doesn't fit on a 220 bed. So before you go out and purchase a printer this big, I'd recommend you double check and make sure that you really, really need this size. So this is the Creality LD-002R and the Anycubic Wash and Cure Machine. I only recently dipped my toes into the resin printing field and I'm pretty impressed by the quality. After using FDM printers for a long time, I'm amazed to see a print where I need a magnifying glass to see the layer lines. But it does come at a cost. The resin is pretty brittle and it can't be deformed like a plastic. This means if you have a re thin resin print and drop it or flex it, it's probably going to break or something will chip off. Since the resin is UV cured, if a print is going to have lots of direct sun exposure, you probably need to consider painting it as well. So let's look at the pros and cons of this LD-002R. Well, pros are it's got amazing quality detail, it's very small, and it's pretty much got a completely quiet operation. The cons are resin smell is pretty strong, it's got a very small build volume, results are brittle, and handling the resin is actually pretty hard. But, if you are going to get into resin printing, I definitely recommend a wash and cure unit as it makes it much safer and easier to do. This wash and cure machine by Anycubic is ideal and much cheaper than most other options. You remove your prints from the resin printer, drop them straight into this basket and put it in your washing liquid. I recommend something alcohol based. Then you let it run for 5 minutes washing the prints, then you remove them and then you put them on the acrylic bed that's inside the machine, let it cure them for 5 minutes and your prints are good to go. Without this, I was trying to wash my prints with a paintbrush and it was very messy. Then I was leaving them in the sun for 2 days trying to get them cured. This didn't work well, it faded the colours and it was relatively uneven. So, if you're looking at getting into resin printing as an alternative or an addition to FDM printing, these two here are a pretty good option and they do complement each other pretty well. So that pretty much wraps it up. We looked at a number of printers today and I hope you now have a bit more of an idea of what you may want from a printer. Basically, my recommendations are as follows with all of these. If you want to learn on a tight budget, get the ANET A8 Plus. If you want a reliable machine on a budget, the Creality Ender 3 series, any of the printers in there are pretty good. If you want a smaller high quality machine, the Artillery Genius is pretty much the way to go, although you could consider a Prusa there if you had a bit more uh, expense. If you want a quality larger machine, probably the Artillery Sidewinder X1. If you want to do multi-material or multi-colour, Tanlog Hands 2. If you want something to put in your living room and keep your wife happy, probably the Two Trees Sapphire Pro. And if you want something very big, the CR10 S5. Then, if you want to print tiny detailed parts or ornaments, the Creality LD-002R. Some of the other popular printers are the TiVo Tarantula. This printer is okay, but I've always steered clear as it appears to be low quality. But hopefully I'll review this printer soon, because I love learning a peculiar thing about the low-end printers. Another one is the CR10, undoubtedly a very popular printer. But these days it seems a bit overpriced for the feature set in comparison to other options out there. Maybe I'll also look at one of these in the future. Then there's the Prusa i3. This is also a very popular printer, and it's known for its quality and ease of use. This is also a good option, but it's starting to get a little outdated with some of the more recent features. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to look at one of these printers in more depth, maybe look at a printer that you really like, please let me know, and I'll see if I can uh, get one and have a look at it, and maybe give you a more detailed review. And yeah, have a nice day. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.